Hey everybody and welcome back to Lindsay's Little Library. So today is Booklist Thursday. Booklist Thursday is something I do with Sarah over at Sarah's Nightstand. We come to you every Thursday with some sort of book ideas, recommendations, something bookish related. So today's theme, um, we're going to talk about our best like surprise books. So books that completely surprised us but in a really good way. Um, so a couple of these I came up with like immediately off the top of my head because they're always the ones I tend to go to when I talk about surprise books. And then there's actually a couple of new ones that I want to talk about. One very recent read that surprised me. So first one I always think of is All the all the Ugly and Wonderful Things by Bryn Greenwood. I was shocked at how much I really, really enjoyed this book and yet feel a little bad for how much I enjoy this book. Um, so this follows our main character is really wavy. She is, um, how old is she when we start? Oh, she's eight years old when we start this. Wait, struggling to raise her little brother, Daniel, eight year old wavy. Yeah, she's eight when this starts. I thought she was a little older, but we do follow her as she does kind of grow up and she's given a really crappy life to really deal with. Both of her parents are involved in drugs. I think her father sells drugs. So she's really left alone to raise her little brother. I think his name's Danny. Nope, Donnell. Donnell? Yeah. Um, so, but she's super smart, um, but doesn't get to go to school a lot just because of the unreliability of her parents. So one of the people that works with her father, his name is Kellen, and he recognizes the shitty circumstances that Wavy is really given and kind of takes Wavy under his own wing, helping her get to school, kind of being the friend she doesn't have. Um, and then it kind of follows Wavy growing up and the relationship she has with Kellen, what happens with her parents and her brother. Um, it's heartbreaking yet beautiful. It's, I was shocked at how much I love this book and I still think about this completely surprised for me. So pick this up for sure. The next book that really surprised me in a really good way um, that I want to talk about, let's not shake the table, all right, is The Smell of Other People's Houses by Bonnie Sue Hitchcock. I picked this up for, I believe it was for a readathon. Oh, it was the one that Sarah and I did, um, a book list readathon. So it would have been a year and a half ago. Um, I picked it up because it was a shorter book and it was something I could finish in a day, but I really was surprised at how much I enjoyed this book. So this follows four, um, kids. So we have Ruth, Dora, Alice, and Hank. They all live in Alaska. Um, and it kind of follows their, and it takes place over a kind of a short period of time, I believe. Um, they're not, I mean, they're connected in a way but as the book progresses they kind of become entangled I guess you could say with each other they each have their own struggles they each have their own strengths that they bring to this little group um it's just I loved it I could clearly picture Alaska I fell in love with all four of these kids it was really really great another just straight surprise for me and how much I really like that book. Um, the next book I want to talk about that really surprised me um, was The Duchess Steel by Tessa Dare. I still cannot believe how much I am enjoying this. There's a series of um, four books. I've read three. We're waiting for the fourth one to come out. It is historical romance. It is, it, parts of it has very classic romance vibes to it which is fine I'm I like a good romance but then there's this like snarky historic or not his snarky hysterical little like and every book has their own little piece that makes it super unique and funny um so the last one I read which was the third book had this parrot that was raised in a brothel so it would just the things it would say was hilarious the second book um there's two kids that are in the book um, and one of them has a doll who dies every day. <laughs> and so they have to have a funeral every day, which is just its own unique, like there's hysterics to it. It's, they're funny, they're funny. And then the first one, like the relationship between the two characters and how 
they're just funny. So I was shocked at how much I like those books. All right. The next one I want to talk about is How to Hang a Witch by Ariana Mather. Again, another one I was really surprised to like as much as I did. This is a YA book and it follows the um, Salem Witch Trials. Um, so it's got some very October Halloween vibes to it, which is why I picked it up last October and was kind of blown away and how much I really, really enjoy this. Now there are parts that are very YA-ish and so there's a part in it that I'm not, I didn't really love, so I think I gave it four stars, but still the rest of it, I was shocked in how much I loved this book. Um, and this actually, um, Adriana, who wrote this, is a descendant of Cotton Mather, who was, the I think main person who accused these people um, of being rich of being witches so fantastic there's some magical realism in it there's witches in October vibes and highly highly encourage you to pick this up in October it's great I loved it the last book I want to talk about is one I actually just read literally a couple weeks ago. It's called The Pull of the Stars by Emma Donahue. Emma Donahue also wrote Room, if you haven't read that book, another great book. But this book, I thought, going into it, I was simply reading a historical fiction that takes place during the Spanish flu um, pandemic. Um, I think this was like 1919, I think is the year it actually took place. 1920, something like that. Um, but there's so much more to it so much more to it so this book takes place over the course of i think three days maybe four three four days and we follow a very small set of characters who are um <clears throat> or it takes place in a hospital in um how do i explain this so it takes place in a hospital but we are strictly in one room really kind of the whole time we are in the maternity ward for mothers who um, have been infected with this influenza. So we follow the moms who come and go over these three days and our main character is the nurse that's in charge of that room at that time. Um, so we do see most of the book takes place in this room but the, she does come and go a couple of times because obviously she needs to leave and sleep and such. Um, so you get a little backstory on how, like, how she became what she is. Um, her own story and struggles at home um, but there you learn so much about these characters and there's and I think what surprised me the most is how it parallels with what is going on in today's world there is a piece in there where, doc, where they're talking about masks and it cracked me up um, it talks about how um, the Poor populations are affected more by this disease, which makes sense and parallels what is happening now. It talks about um, government propaganda. It talks about motives behind certain um, policies that are put in place. It's shocked me to no end how I gained more from it. And then add on top of that, learning about these characters and watching um, them grow and change over just such a short period of time and what they have to do and deal with it's so much more than my narrow-minded historical fiction that I thought I was going to be walking into it so it shocked me and I love it and it actually just came out not that long ago um I did listen to this book which was a oof, fantastic I couldn't stop listening to it um I got it through Libro FM my links below if you want to check it out but it was amazing. I can't say enough good things about that. So anyways, those are my five best surprise books. We're going to do an honorable mention because it's sitting here and I'm going to throw Illuminae in there as well. The Illuminae series has surprised the crap out of me and how much I love this. I never thought I was a science fiction type of reader at all. And yep, can't get enough of this at all. And because it's such a different format, but I love it. So that was another big surprise, which probably shouldn't be all that big of a surprise because it's a fantastic book so anyways you tell me what are some of the best surprise books that you have come across because I'm always looking for that 
you know, that diamond in the rough. Um, and we'll chat below in the comments. Otherwise, like, subscribe, and make sure you go over to Sarah's channel and see what she's got for us today. I think I have a few ideas, but I'm not sure. Um, but yeah, otherwise, like, subscribe, have a great day, and we'll see you later. Bye.